thank y'all for coming as always uh fun monday night so yeah like i was saying um i actually i can tie this into this call the broker talks are important and building a relationship with a broker is important because this deal is one that i have it i guess like a verbal agreement it's just they're waiting for me to um either offer either lower or reconsider uh, or change something in the offer or um it's passed on it essentially or accept the offer that they have presented but i have something on the table that's 700 less than they were asking um and that's because the broker has been pushing for it i've been the most active i'm responsive funny enough he knows i'm an agent as well so he's not even getting his full commission so he's working hard for me and with me because he still wants to get a deal done um it's a good relationship met the guy yesterday for the first time um and really it it does help being in rooms like this and being on these calls and the other calls oh sherman oaks nice uh, i used to be at the studio city keller williams that's awesome um but sorry i got off topic but anytime i see someone from la i get excited um <laughs> uh, we'll talk later though um so yeah what i'm saying is it's really it's really easy for a broker to not follow up or to forget or to just like move on if you're not active as well you know if it's a one way the phone works both ways if it's a one-way phone call all the time then that's not really a relationship at this point it's more of like a task on your bucket list like on your calendar so you want to make it where it's going both ways let them hit you up you hit them up have a conversation and really know what you're talking about i think is a big component of it being in rooms like this um on all the weekly calls we have which um, I feel like it's expanding every day and we're always um, in, improving what we have to talk about, improving, um, adding new things to it and much and stuff like that. So I really want to quickly share my screen. Cool. And then please let me know if you guys can hear this. Um, going into the education piece, this is something that is you guys will get more information on, but something that the guys have put together, if this works. Okay, there we go. Multi-family Freedom Chasers family, I have exciting news for you all. We are launching our preferred partners program for the community. You as a community member, as a freedom chaser, have access to this right now for free. So what is the Preferred Partners Program? It is a program designed when you are ready to accelerate your multifamily real estate journey. You are ready to invest in yourself, to level up your education. and business building experience. This is the place to go. These are the partners in resources that we have invested into. Is the audio freezing for anyone else or is it just me? Yeah, it's freezing for me as well. We use hands-on. Yeah, me too. To us level up That's freezing. So pretty cool. Our preferred partners that are a part this list it, it continues to grow but right now they have over two billion dollars of assets under man management super cool high level teams and high level operating individuals so let me walk you through this here really quickly We have Gay Bowling's real estate training, mastering multifamily with Vina Jetty with her educational vault. Rockstar Capital and Robert Martinez, they have several different educational options. If you need money, 
Mindset and performance coaching, we got Keston Glasgow with Purpose Ways. The Mary Machine website. Sorry, I don't know why that keeps happening. Um, still funnels, marketing, that. everything you need there. Self-directed retirement uh, services with Horizon Trust, CRM, an underwriting multifamily course with Ken Gee himself. And then if you don't have the funding, but you're ready to ex And I have a suggestion. Let's pause it for today. I think they've got a sense of multifamily it, journey and invest in yourself and invest in your business. We have deep. Okay, well, that's kind of the, I don't know why the video is not very cooperative today. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, that's essentially just general no idea of what the preferred partner is. Um, just gives you an idea of what um, is being offered and whatnot. And the a lot of the people that are part of the preferred program have also been on the Sunday calls, which is nice because it's a familiar face. It's people you guys have seen. You can go back and watch it on YouTube or, um, and they're just involved in the community. Uh, I know on last Tuesday's call, we had Ken uh, jump in and help a lot with uh, talking about underwriting and we had an awesome conversation. So they're very hands-on, they're very involved, they're in the community and always looking to um, add value where they can. So we, we appreciate them a lot and it's a great resource for um, taking the next step and leveling up. Sorry, my computer is not cooperating right now with anything. Can you guys hear me? Yep. We can now. Yeah. yeah before. Sorry, I'm having technical issues. Um, all right. So I'm I'm gonna try to get uh Peter that call you sent me last week on. Ed, I'm guessing that means you didn't use that call last week. Well, we, okay, so here's the situation. We started the call, and then we just got a lot of questions that kind of jumped in okay. during the call, and then we ended up not finishing it, which actually kind Perfect. of worked out well because it ignited some great conversation. Um, we just Absolutely. didn't continue. So it, it, was, it served its purpose, that's for sure. Um, I just – I apologize right now because my computer is not having – it at all and i'm struggling to load anything so um yeah if anyone wants to unmute has a question has something they want to kind of spark a conversation with please feel free to jump in um peter i don't know if you've got anything to add um, yeah so i can't, I can't be ter terribly active today unfortunately i'm uh i'm in the car and we got a <laughs> we got delayed on our drive home from new england by 24 hours uh due to car problems but we are rocking and rolling and on the way but uh what i would say is um like you were saying if anybody has any questions we certainly would love to to answer those questions um but beyond that is anybody on the call has anyone been making broker calls over the last week or two um, and of course, I can't, I can't call on anybody because I can't look at my screen. I don't know who's on the call. So, um, 
Are there, is there anybody on the call making calls that wants to talk about it? Tell us successes, failures. Um, Ed, do you see anybody on the call that you know has been making calls? Uh, do we have all new people? Who's on with us tonight? Can you hear me, Ed? Hey, Peter. I, this is Fred. I can yeah, hear you. Yeah, yeah. We, we yeah, can hear pretty good. Um, yeah, no, I haven't been making calls. I am looking for contacts. If you have any broker contacts in North Carolina, uh, I'm going to start okay. focusing in that area. So if you have folks or you have some contacts, I'd gladly make some calls and uh, share, share what we talked about next week. <laughs> awesome. So this is Fred, right? If I'm not mistaken? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, Fred, good Peter. to see you. Appreciate you joining us again. Have you have you made any calls at all, Fred? I I have, um, you know, but not recently. Um, it's been a, okay. probably a couple of months. I've been looking for, at a lot of deals, and they're just not penciling out. Um, right. So I, I haven't really called. I, you know, I met some guys out in, in Dallas, but I'm not focusing. I want to I want to grow in North Carolina closer. I live in Massachusetts. So my idea is to get close to North Carolina. It's one of the growing populations. A lot of industries going down there. So I think it's got a bright future. It's relatively still uh, affordable, if you will. Um, yeah. And uh, so I want to focus on that area, but I really don't have any contacts down and I'm looking for anybody who has any contacts. And uh, like I said, uh, I'm starting now and then, uh, looking for, for names out there. Well, we can definitely talk about that. I'd love to book a call with you this week and, um, and do that. And talk about you know I don't have any particular contacts that I know personally right now, but I promise you I can find a whole bunch of people to connect with over the next. Oh, that'd be so that, that that that'd be great. Uh, yeah, I mean I I, I can put um, my contact. Well, I did put my contact in in the chat. Uh, if you, you got a phone number and an email, it, uh, if you can reach out once you <laughs> once you stop driving, uh, I'm available this week or next week whenever it works for you, Pete. Yeah. So let me do this. Um, um, Ed, if you're still, if you can hear me, put my cell phone in the chat. Um, I know Ed has it. In fact, Fred, if you, if you, obviously you can hear me. If you would just type in the chat, Peter's cell is six seven eight. I got you here. All right, good. Put that in the chat. Anybody wants to reach out, please do. Fred, definitely send me a text. Let's get connected. I messed up because I really did want to try to reach out to you and. And connect with you over this last week. I just spent 10 days in New England, but I, we were so busy with family, I probably wouldn't have been able to pull it off anyway. But we need to plan yeah, to get yeah, together no, with my next Yeah, no, no, no worries. Yeah, absolutely. I'll reach out to you tomorrow. And ever, whenever you uh, have a break, uh, just you know, text me back and we'll uh, sync up. Appreciate it, Pete. What town, what town are you in, Fred? I'm in a town called Westport, Massachusetts, okay. about uh, 50 minutes south of Boston near uh, Rhode yeah. Island, heading towards the Cape? Yeah, I, uh, my, I have a niece that lives in, what, what, niece, what town does Kirsty live in? She's not in Situate, but she's close. Um, I don't know. Anyway, towards the Cape, same thing. I live in, my, my family's from Lincoln, Rhode Island, so I'm about an hour from where you live. Oh, yeah, I, I know Lincoln. I know Lincoln well. <laughs> yeah, I just spent the last last week, well, most of the time. We went up to New Hampshire for a couple of days as well, but. Anyway, we'll definitely connect. Let's let's link up this week on the phone. Um, Appreciate it. We'll do. I have that. your cell number, so we'll, we'll we'll do that. I'll reach out to you. Awesome. Is there anybody else on the call that's been that's been making calls, or again, not? We want to hear about the failures too, guys, because that's where we learn. Um, we don't learn nearly as much from the stuff that goes well. We learn a lot more from when we're having struggles. So we'd love for you to get for you guys to come on here, tell us what you're struggling with. Um, if you're, if you want to make, cause there are a lot of people that come on this call and they come on to learn because they want to learn this part of the business, but they're not necessarily planning on, on doing the calls anyway. And that's fine. Um, I do the same thing. I'm on some zooms for asset management. I have no intention of being an asset manager, but I still want to learn that side of the business. But if you do want to make calls and you're not, this is the safe space to talk about that, right? Why aren't you? And let's let us help you through that. Let us get you over that hump. Let us get you over the hurdle. Let's let us get you making calls. Um, so is there anybody on here that that wants to talk about that? I I do. Um, unfortunately, 
fortunately, maybe and unfortunately, I just hit some dead stop traffic so I can kind of peek at who's on here. So I see some familiar faces. Appreciate you guys being here. BB, good to see you. Thanks for hopping on tonight. Um, I think you've made some broker calls. What, what, what can you tell us about your experience calling brokers? Oh, <laughs> hello everyone. Uh, my name is Bibi. Um, my first experience with the broker was, um, I get it was not good because the broker asked me um, a question. He said, "What's your uh, your bank statement?" Um, I want to see your bank statement. Um, have you bought properties in this location before? Um, how many units do you have? How long have you been doing this? So um, those kind of questions are very uncomfortable and can throw you off balance if you're not prepared for it. So but fortunately for me, I was prepared for it because um, I, I started I was already doing this in my um, single families and all that. So I was already interacting with agents and also owners. So I, I, I knew how to um, answer those questions, but those were the questions I received at that time. And um, they were not comforting and all that. And the reason why they were asking that we make was because of my presentation. Brokers always want to know um, if you're a time waster if you're just going to waste their time because they're there for the money. They're just, they want to collect their percentage. So they don't need people that will not go through the finish line. So they are assessing you based on your confidence, what you're saying, if you know what you're doing. The level of your knowledge or your professionalism will determine how their response will be towards you. So after that first call, because I started building my confidence. The more I was doing it, the better I became. And I and and no one has ever asked me for my bank statement. No one has ever asked me for my experience because I, I now know how to um, what to say that will prevent those answers, those questions from coming to me. So um, always know that they want to know how experienced you you are. Uh, it's important that you 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 understand the basics of whatever it is you're discussing about before you jump on a call with them. So I don't know. Um. <laughs> now, TV, that that is fantastic, and I'm so glad I called on you because that's been exactly my experience as well, right? And we've talked about this on the calls in the past, and it's so important for you to be able to get to the point where you can talk to these brokers with confidence. And that's why we want you guys to come here. If you're not confident in making the calls, reach out to us. Um, reach out to me, reach out to BB, reach out to Ed. I'll hop on a call with you one on one and we'll talk through it. But my experience is exactly the same as yours, BB, right? The first time I got those questions, I think I stumbled through it okay, but I wasn't prepared for it. Now, it's second nature, right? And, and most of what I do, and you, if you guys have been on the calls before, you've probably heard some examples, but um, I leverage the, the experience of the team, right? We, we've got plenty of people on the team that have closed deals, uh, that own units, but I don't, need, it, it's, I don't hesitate when they ask me those types of things. Uh, and that's the, you know, everybody talks about the dreaded proof of funds question, right? Um, do you have proof of funds? I've never had a broker ask me that question. And the reason they don't ask me that question is because I speak to them with confidence. I've been in enough of these Zooms that I have enough knowledge that I know what to ask. I know what to say. Um, we, I, we have a script. I barely use it. But you know what? When I'm making calls, it's sitting on my desk. So I can glance over at it and I can see a bullet point that I want to hit, hit based on where the the conversation going. So when you talk like you know what you're talking about, even though you've never done a deal before, they just don't ask those questions. So everybody on this call, if you if you don't have the confidence today, I promise you, if you will reach out to us and let us know that, we can get you there. We can get you where you have total confidence, even though you've never done a deal. If you've never raised a single dollar to close a deal, 
you can still make these calls and, and do it successfully and, and develop relationships because that's what it's all about, right? We're all about having the relationships with these brokers so when the time is right, they know who you are. When you call them that next time, when you call them that fifth time, whatever it is, they answer the phone, they know who you are. And then when they have a deal that fits your buy box, you know, they, they're going to reach out to you. But for now, where most of us are, Right? We don't own a whole bunch of units. We're going to have to be the ones that reach out. We're going to have to continue to reach out until we hit them at the right time when they have that deal that makes sense for us. Then once you close, it, it's that we all have to get over that hurdle of that first deal, right? Once you close that first deal, that's when the floodgates open. Uh, that's what everybody says, right? I'm not there yet. So I don't, I can't, I don't, so I'm not speaking from experience. I'm speaking from the experience of the team. That's when they start reaching out to you. You close a deal with a broker, that broker knows who you are. They're going to be reaching out to you when they come across a deal that's similar to the one you closed with. So that's where we need to get you. And it all starts with that confidence. And if you have that confidence level, um, it's just so much easier to pick up the phone and call. When you're when you're not confident, I get it, right? That phone looks like it weighs about a thousand pounds, and it's really hard to pick up. And we want to get you guys over that. So I appreciate that, baby. Um, thanks for for sharing that experience. Zach Jones, I see you hiding over there behind that smile. Talk to me. Have you been making calls? I think you've been on this call before. Nope. First time on this call, I was invited to be on this call tonight. I uh, just went to a networking event this past Thursday. This whole world's brand awesome. new to me. So I'm definitely okay. excited. I'm, I'm in Frisco, Texas, just 30 minutes north of Dallas. Uh, grateful to be here, but I have a lot of questions. I mean, I guess I'll just ask one. BB, Peter, uh, with talking to brokers, well, one, if you're brand new, where would you start? Or how would you start? And then number two, when you're talking to brokers, what are some of the questions that you're asking them sound confident? Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? So I wanted to, I could jump in real quick. It's um, one thing we actually recommend here and a few people have actually told us they've done before is call in a market that you're probably not going to invest in. It's a good way to practice. It's a good way to learn about an area. It's a good way to, um, see what it's like having that conversation and what will be asked. Because you, if you're not going to buy there, you're not really going to, it's not a market you look for. Um, you kind of don't have much, in your mind, you don't have much to lose. In reality, you never have anything to lose. But it's a lot less when you don't care about the market. Like, trust me, we've done it in LA. Like, on these calls, everyone loves to pick on Los Angeles because no one's buying here. Like, no one's really looking to invest here. You know, it's not the first market on everyone's mind. So why not pick a market that, you know, you can talk to a thousand agents and get all the practice in the world. Um, and, and another thing is, um, I would say my phone number is in here and I've also put Peter's phone number. Uh, if you get a chance today, text us um, saying you want the script and then uh, we can email it because we both have it in our emails. But um, text us so we can make sure we send that out. And that's for everyone. We have a script that's kind of like, I never like being married to a script. I don't think that's the right approach because you want it to sound natural, flow of conversation. The same way you're up here and you're talking to people you've never met before. Um, to be fair, I've never met anyone on this call in person. I've met, it's all through the community. In reality, it's, it's, I feel like there's a big intimidation factor, especially with brokers being commercial agents. They pass the same test I did. It's not a hard test. I promise you it's not a hard test. They're people too. They're just specialized in this field. Sometimes lack of specialization, to be fair. Um, but at the end of the day, you're just having conversation and trying to get to know somebody. Um, it's the same way you would with a seller in single family space where you're trying to build a rapport, build a relationship, find out the reasons. You just have a filter between you because you're asking the same questions you would about a seller on a single family, just on a multifamily scale, um, and you have a broker in between. So if they don't know the answer, great, even better. Hey, let me follow up to you in a few days and uh, let me know if you get those answers. You know, um, the biggest thing I like to do, and this will be kind of like my last point before I take up too much more time, is make sure every call you end 
you have an idea of when you're going to contact them next. You establish like, hey, let me, I'll follow up with you in a few days about X, Y, Z. Or if anything changes, let me know. Or I'll call you next Monday, let's say, uh, let me know if anything changes about a specific property or if they may have gotten potential listing. You always want to have an action item as to when you're going to call them next because then they're ready for it. It's not a random phone call while you're calling them. Um, especially where commercial agents and the busy ones are actually pretty busy, you know, because the due diligence process, your escrows are longer. There's a lot more like pressure on every deal to make sure it's taken care of and closed because it's a, it's a dragged out process that you want to make sure that the calls are intentional and there's purpose behind it. One thing I like to do is even if you know you're not going to look at a deal or like it's not a deal of interest, hey, I like it because of X, Y, Z. I don't like it because of this. Do you have something that fits what I'm looking for? Then they know what you want. If you don't know what you want, how do they know what you want? Be very direct and saying, this is what I'm looking for. And it'll make it a lot easier because then they'll remember you. If you think multifamily freedom chasers, who do you think of? The three guys, right? And that's the point. When you think here is something, then you want them to think of you. If that's the, what you're looking for. I think that's very valuable. You're creating your brand in a sense. It's awesome. Thank you, Edward. Yeah. Zach, I'd love to jump in on that. Um, to answer your question specifically, I would say, number one, get the script for sure. Review the script so you can get a little bit more comfortable about you know, the types of questions we ask. That's number one. Number two, I would definitely go online and listen to a number of calls um, and just get a sense of how these calls go, get a sense of what the brokers ask um, and, and be prepared for those questions, the dreaded questions that BB talked about, right? Uh, do you have proof of funds? Um, how many doors do you own? Uh, are, do you own anything in this market? And I'll tell you, the answer to those questions is really quite simple. Um, but in, in general, I'm, first of all, I haven't had to answer the, the proof of funds question because I'm speaking with confidence. When you speak with confidence, they won't ask you that question. But even if they do, you know, if you're looking at a $20 million property and you're going to have a $5 million raise, who's sitting with $5 million in cash, right? You know, we're... Proof of funds is not really an issue. The only reason they ask you that question is because you haven't, haven't expressed that confidence um, and they're trying to lead you out. So uh, anyway, you, you leverage the, the value, the experience of the team, and you'll be able to overcome that stuff really easily. But again, listen to a few calls. Um, give me a call. I'll, I'll hop on a call and we'll, we'll do a call together if you want. Um, I'll show you what we do. Uh, in fact, I need to make some videos, like some short videos, and we'll do that. But uh, what we do to do the research, to find a, a, a property that it, that looks interesting, and to find the broker and to you know start making phone calls. I'd be happy to do that with anybody on this call. So you've got my cell phone, reach out to me, shoot me a text. Um, I'd love to do that this week with some of you guys uh, on the call if you'd like to do that. So um, hopefully that helps. Appreciate you being here. Have you been on any of the other Zooms or is this your first one? This is my first one, sir. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Awesome. Nice. I put the well, there's been a few, other, there's been a few other young guys on here and I guess some of them, one of them looks like you. So that's why I thought you had been on here before. I uh, appreciate you joining us. Tell thank your you. friends and come back. Yes, sir. Thank you. Awesome. Hi. Um, this Alicia, is Alicia. Good to see you on here again tonight. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah, can yes. you hear me? Yes. Oh, hi. Good evening. Yes, Bridget. This good is to Bridget. See you. I've been on the call a few times. Um, may have spoken once or twice. Um, and like Fred had mentioned, um, I'm looking in the, the North Carolina market. Um, in Fayetteville, that's my core market. Um, I haven't yet start talking to brokers. However, I was supposed to have um start making calls last week with a partner of mine and of mine and then we decided not to because um I don't want to be in a position where I'll make it one time and I don't follow up so with me not like having a system in place a CRM like a follow-up system we decided to not make the calls because I don't want to start something that I'm not going to continue with so that's where I'm kind of at 
right now. And then if anyone has any, um, and if they can do like an introduction for me for any brokers um, in the North Carolina market, particularly Fayetteville, North Carolina, I mean, I would truly appreciate that. But that's the hurdle where I'm at right now because I don't have my system in place, a follow-up system. So when I do start making these broker calls, um, I can you know, be consistent with it. That's yeah, fine. Real quick and, um, help with that. I'm going to try to do this. So I apologize if it, the technical difficulties pop up again. But real quick, um, this is something that I know Peter has shown on previous calls, but um, a quick little trick on using Crexy. I think we did review this last week, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I think it's very useful. Crexy is essentially like your commercial, it literally stands for commercial real estate exchange. Um, and you have this awesome part about this where you could go to this top right here, those three lines. You guys see my screen, right? I'm not talking to myself. Yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah we can. So you click here on the top right and you go find a broker. Now, I'm not saying this data is a million percent accurate and by no means is it like, oh, these are the only listings these people have ever done. But let's say I want to go to their... Um, North Carolina. This is a very quick, easy place in one, on one uh, website, one page where you can get a list of brokers in the neighborhood. And the cool part is it tells you a little bit about them. Pro means they paid for it or they have like some subscription. You get a little brief synopsis and bio about them. You get some listing and active listings. That's good information. And this is just a really easy way to just pick out a few brokers give it a shot um, and essentially test the waters, you know? Um, here's the thing you have to realize too. There are so many brokers, it's kind of crazy. Um, you, you're never gonna run out of one, that's for sure. So use this as a cool tool. You can uh, move it with the listings, the asset type, um, specific brokerages, the city. So this is just a quick, easy tool to use to um, find agents, find brokers, and um, essentially just give them a call. Like it, it's really quick. You just click their name. You get some information about them. You see if they have any active listings. And then you give them a call and go from there. Um, so utilize Crexy. I think it's a really easy way to um, get started, get a what's in the area, and um, you can just quickly call any broker from here, uh, and then you can just go to contact, so you send a message. I don't know if it has their phone number. It usually, I think for some people it does, um, but it's a quick way to just get a, try to get a hold of some people. So that was a quick little thing I like to share too. Hey, hey, Ed, on, on, a, on that screen, I've never used it. On that screen, can you filter brokers that are multifamily as opposed to just general commercial? Yeah, let me share that again. So when I went to this right here, asset type, retail, multifamily, office, industrial, hospitality, land, mixed use, mobile home parks, senior living, special purpose, note loan. You can get very- Perfect. Specific. You know, perfect. I'll use it. Thanks, Ed. Yeah, definitely. And um, it's just a quick, easy place to go. You can go to RoofNet and try to get direct contact to brokers, but for some reason, it's a little hard to get a hold of a broker's phone number on RoofNet, at least from my personal experience. Um, but yeah, just play around with it. Find ways to get in contact with people. Google's probably going to be your best friend. Um, and you just give it a shot. Like you don't lose anything by trying. Trust me, you can call a broker today, butcher the call, call them in two weeks, they won't remember you. That's that's I wouldn't really worry too much um about how the call goes. It's just getting those reps in, getting familiar with the questions they ask, getting used to like what that flow is. And it's like a seller call. If you control the conversation, it becomes really easy to just get the information you need and have them trying to help you out. Um, build that credibility as much as you can, and it'll it'll be a, very smooth going from there. Hey, 
has anyone called like what are some common questions or objections or hurdles that you may get with a broker when you guys for those that have called if anyone has anyone can i chime in here yeah of course please do yes um another thing i i, I suggest you also do is know some few terms there are some few terms you need to mention when you're talking to a broker for them to know that you experienced um, terms like what's the whisper amount, what is the price per door. You need to sound, even if you're not a professional, sound a little like them um, so that they even listen to you. So get to know those, not so much, maybe five words, five terms. What, um, uh, what's, what is the renovation like, you know, things like that. Just sound a little like them. Those things will also make them see you as someone that is a professional, someone that knows what he or she is doing and all that. I just said I should mention that. Absolutely. No, I agree. And also think of it like this. Put yourself in the shoes of like a broker. If I'm going to take a buyer seriously, what are some things I'm hoping they ask me? And I don't mean to make that sound like a trick question, but if you're trying to find out about a property, hey, when are offers due? When are offers being reviewed? What is the timeline? What's important to the seller? Um, you're not always going to get the, they're not always going to accept the best offer. They're going to accept the offer that they're most confident will close. That's the biggest part. Remember, this isn't a one month, 30 day, two week, nice, cute, quick escrow. Like this stuff is long, it's brutal, and it's painful. Um, you have a lot of risk capital at stake. So brokers have a lot of time and money on their end at stake. Your due diligence is like the worst homework assignment you've ever had in your life on every single property. Um, and lenders are going to ask for everything and maybe a child from you. Like that's basically it. Like lenders requests get ridiculous from what they want to see on your financials to answering every question about everything you've ever done in your life to explaining everything you've ever um, charged on your credit card. It, it gets out of hand. And I think that's one thing that I, I don't want to make it a big deal. Like, oh my God, it's the worst thing on earth and everyone quit now. But it's the awareness of where you're we're really walking into the fire as you get closer to a deal being accepted, opening escrow, sending the EMD, doing the due diligence, walking the property, paying inspectors thousands, tens of thousands, sometimes of dollars that you are not getting. It, I don't care what happens. No inspecting inspection company is ever going to refund that. And that's not for me to scare you. It's for me to say, be very confident and put the right people around you. Between getting the LOI approved or agreed on and actually opening escrow, you've already spent like $20,000. Having a lawyer review the PSA, prepare the PSA, um, making sure you have your risk capital in check, making sure you have um, that money ready. Like we had a $17.7 million property. We had to have $177,000 in three days. Like that's coming from someone and whoever's providing that is going to want something. Um, and who's on the hook for it? I think that's the most important part. Like a lot of people on this call are new and I'm not, again, not trying to scare anyone, but these are things you need to have lined up. And when you know you have that support backing you, you'll be more confident on the phone. It, it's when you don't know what to expect and a broker may ask you, okay, maybe they're asking you for proof of funds for the full amount, but do you have proof of funds for the EMD? That's 1%. That's give 99% left. We can't show 1%. That's tough. That, that I can't help you there. Like I'm, I'm not saying everyone has 200,000 laying in their account, but you got to have someone on the team that can be like, don't worry, I got this. Or I have a guy, don't worry. Um, or even a loan sponsor. That's huge. Um, especially now, as you guys will get familiar with, assumable debt is going to be very popular and it's, it is very popular, although it may not be the most leveraged, which we could get into. But you're going to see, you, you need a loan. I don't care if it's assumable or a new loan or whatever, wherever you're getting your debt from. Uh, Sorry, I don't want to butcher your name, Dana. Dana, yeah, you you mentioned your lender, right? You know this better than anyone. Yeah, Dana. Yeah. Yeah, Dana. So how, like, it's important. You know this when it comes to the lending side. 
you can't just walk into a, a, a lending office and say, hey, I have this property. We open escrow, help me with a loan. There's a lot of prep and stuff beforehand that has to go with it. And, and if you, you are doing that, like walking in the day of, it's going to cost you a lot more. Just bottom line, you know, yeah. nothing quick comes, uh, is, is free. Or if it is, it, it's not the best quality. Just keep that in mind. Um, so it, it's really important to have your ducks lined up, have everything checked out in regards to what you're looking for, where you're looking, knowing your market, um, and who are you working with? I think that's the biggest thing. If anyone comes to me and says, hey, Ed, um, I'm just starting out. I want to call brokers. Where should I call? I want to tell you to call my market because one, I I know where I'm looking. I have the people around me that I'm like, all right, we find something here. I know we could close it. And I'll be like, cool. You find something in this area with a broker. You think it's a good deal? Send it my way and we'll, we'll, we'll go from there and we'll show you the steps um, along the way. I, I think that's very important because um, I don't like saying this um, to discourage anyone, but if you think you can do this alone, good luck. The, your Grant Cardones, your Robert Martinez, your Gabe Bowling, all these guys who are done deals and doing thousands of units, nobody did it alone. I promise you. Your masterminds, they preach how much a team's important. And that's why we have that sheet that gives you all the docs. Now, I don't recommend every newbie start combining, joining forces and starting from day one together because you need someone who's been through it. You need someone who knows what docs are required how to do the due diligence. In fact, I went way off topic, but you get my point where um, having all those things lined up makes the broker call that much easier. And, and it sounds crazy. It's like, why do I need to go through all that? It's because even if they give you a great deal, do you know how to underwrite it? Do you know who to bring it to? Can you put an LOI in a week and confidently tell the broker, we can close on this in 90 days? Because that's all it comes down to. Remember, we're doing step one, which is contacting brokers to find a deal to close on it. If your intention isn't to call a broker and close on whatever deal that they send you that could be a home run, then you, you're, that's, you're wasting your time. Now, if you're calling them to practice, perfect. Get used to that. Get that training in. Get that work in. Amazing. If you're on the East Coast and like, you don't mind staying up a little later, call Pacific after you've done your calls on the East Coast. That's what I would do. I would wake up early and call the East Coast if I'm trying to call brokers here. So you get your practice in. It's like warming up. And then I would start calling the brokers near me whenever the time was right. Um, any other questions on that? I feel like if you guys keep me in trance, I'm going to keep ranting and then it's going to stop making sense. Um, but I, I think that all comes with the confidence um zach you're probably looking like who's this crazy guy that doesn't stop talking but um it is a lot like i'm not gonna tell anyone it's not that's why we have zooms four days a week five days a week sometimes that's why we have all these people come on and these preferred partner programs because there is a lot to learn um there's only so much you can learn by consuming i think you should be active in it practice the script or we um, kind of shied away from the role playing, but we will bring that back. Uh, Peter and I will kind of go over that and just get a few people on here and just role play. I noticed I'm like the nice guy in the role play, which is ironic, but it is what it is. Um, so anyone else that's called brokers or is nervous to call brokers that has any questions about that? No. Yes. All right. Oh, shoot. Ed, you're, you're a broker, right? Yeah. In California. Yeah. It's okay. Don't matter. You guys yeah. all think alike. <laughs> I like to think California has the craziest ones, but that's just me. <laughs> um, so, so may, maybe you'd be a good role player. One of these, uh, one of these nights, you know, have, yeah. uh, have somebody and they'll be, uh, you know, maybe you got role play maybe for a future call. Yeah. I, I, I actually used to, this is more for when I was working as like doing focus as an agent. I don't think you can role play enough. I was on role play calls every morning. Um, now that I participate every morning, no, but I was in the call. Um, goal would be to get off market deals. Um, absolutely. Now take it with a grain of salt. 
a broker may tell you off market, but they've shared it with a thousand people. Uh, it, it's really hard to truly know what an off market is. One thing I learned, not just in commercial or multifamily or whatever part of real estate you're in, speed wins. I'm not saying be reckless, but I'm saying be efficient. If you have a broker that sends you a deal, try to get something in front of them as soon as possible or just a response because they know you're on top of it. Hey, it didn't work because of X, Y, Z. If I miss something, let's talk it out. And, and that's not a bad thing either. Like if they send you a deal, even if it's on market, off market, whatever it is, and it doesn't work, talk it out. Hey, it didn't work because of this. Did I make any wrong assumptions? And then you guys can have a conversation. It really comes down to like why I like doing these calls so much besides talking to you all is one, I'm talking things out that I know on my day-to-day I don't. You know, it's like a, I'm not by any means calling myself an e- expert or a teacher, but it's like, why do people love to teach? Because you're talking about stuff you like to talk about, but you may not have no one else to talk about it with. <laughs> Let's be honest. Not many people in our circles, like our friends, maybe like I'm going to go talk about a hundred unit building and all the ins and outs and the numbers and NOI and cause. And that's not, it, it, we're in a different world sometimes to be fair. Um, so the more you're around this community on the nightly calls, asking questions, connecting with people, um, if anyone wants to just chat and offline or has a question or underwrite a deal, I will also be, I also host an underwriting call tomorrow. So I will be there uh, with Will and Will. So people have just called, hit me up like, hey, I have this deal. Let's, let's hop on a Zoom. Okay, let's do it. Like I used to host Zooms and just people would watch me underwrite. I stopped doing it because I was ineffective, but they were fun. <laughs> and they were too much fun. But it, it's, it really comes down to, I think most importantly, finding what you're good at, finding what you like. Don't be an expert at everything. Know a lot of things, but be really good at one thing. It's like an athlete. You're not making it to MBA if you're just mediocre at everything. You're just really, really good at one thing or two things, and then just above average on the rest. And that's perfectly fine. I am not the person who's going to raise $10 million for you, but I can underwrite a $100 million building for you. I love the strategy behind it. I'll find ways to maximize money to make the NOI go up, to make this deal look good. And I'll throw out ridiculous offers that most of the time the sellers aren't going to like, but they sound fun and exciting and you never know. Hey, we need seller to carry this. We need this. How about we delay that amount? How about if we buy the entity and not the property? What the heck does that do? It saves you a lot in taxes. You know, there's so many different strategies and fun ways you can play around with it. And does it always work? No. But if it wasn't going to work anyway, at least we gave it another shot. You know, you, you may spark an idea somewhere else. Someone else may, um, may be able to think of. And all of a sudden you have a deal now. Um, capitalizing on different opportunities, knowing the market very well is a massive asset. Um, if you like asset management, take it and run with it. If you've never done it, find a good deal, partner with people who have done it and say, Hey, I want to be in the room and I want to be on this part of the team. And that you'll get a position for it, a GP position, hopefully. Uh, and you get to learn like your first deal. I'm not saying have no expectations, but don't expect you're going to get a large percentage of ownership. That's not the point of the first deal. The first point of the first deal is to catapult you to the next 10, 20, 30, whatever your goal is, you know? Um, and, and the best way to do that is to find the deal. That's the first part. Or get really good at capital raise. That's the, in my opinion, that's the right now is the most valuable part. A great deal is awesome, but if I have no money, what the heck does it matter? I can't fund it. Who cares? Give me, give me the best deal in the world. But if I don't have the money back in me, that there's, it doesn't matter. And I'd like to jump in on that because I think the opposite is a better position to be in, right? And what I mean by that is, like you said, if you find a killer deal and you can't fund it, well, that deal is going to go to waste, right? Somebody else is going to get it. If you raise a whole bunch of capital, but you don't have a place to put it yet, that's not going to be a problem. Right. You, I promise you, there's somebody in this community 
that can find you a great deal to link up that money with. So as long as you have money, you will find deals. So if, if that's a place you think you're drawn to, I, I agree with Ed 100%. I would hop in and learn capital raising because that's going to be certainly the fastest way to get on the GP tape. Uh, so I just want to make that point. I want to make two other points before we run out of time. It's 856. One thing we do want to do in this community is keep these calls tight. We want to respect your time. We want to get you out of here in an hour. Um, you made a really, really important point, Ed. Um, and it's I'm, I'm forgetting what it was at the moment. So I'll jump to the, my comment about Bridget's question. Bridget, you had asked if you're still on. If you're not, hopefully you catch the recording. Um, you talked about you, you didn't make the calls because you didn't have a CRM in place. Now, I would encourage you, don't let that stop you, right? You'll need a CRM. It, it, let, let's hope the goal is that you will need a CRM. Today, on July 16th or 18th or 20th, whatever the date is, I don't even know, I lost track. Um, 20, July 2023, you don't need a CRM. Use Excel. Put their name and phone number in, in an Excel spreadsheet, put the property address you called them about, and then put in some notes. That's it, that's all you need. And then circle through that thing, whatever cadence you decide. Every week, every two weeks, go back to the top of the list and follow up with the people. That, that's the first thing I would say. The second thing I would say is back to the, the point that Ed made that was really, really important. The follow-up with these, people, what, what's going to happen is you're going to make some phone calls and they're going to send you some deals. You're not going to know what to do with it. That's where you come back on Tuesday night for the napkin underwrite. If it's a go on the napkin underwrite, you come back on Wednesday night for the deep dive. If it's a go on the deep dive, then you're going to need to partner up with some people on these calls to, to push the deal forward. But if on Tuesday night you come back and you find out, yeah, this deal doesn't have legs. Well, why? Make notes as to why you're not going to pursue it. Then call that broker back and say, hey, appreciate the information. We're not going to pursue this one. Here's why. You do that and you seem like you know what you're talking about, right? You give them valid reasons why that deal doesn't make sense for you and your team. And you're, you're going to be on that guy's radar screen or that gal's radar screen. Um, so anyway, I just want to make that point, follow up with these people, tell them why you're not moving forward, uh, and maybe you are moving forward, and then submit an LOI and come back to these calls, right? You get to that point, you're like, okay, I need to submit an LOI. Now what do I do? Come back on these calls. We've got many people on this call have submitted LOIs before. We can help you through that process. So that's it. I'm going to sign on. Hey guys, I'm going to focus on my driving, it's getting dark, pay attention, but I thank everybody for being here. Uh, we appreciate the support. Keep coming back. Link up with us. Link up with other people on this call. Send us a text. Tell us what you need. Tell us what you want to hear. Tell us what you want to talk about next week for you guys. Um, and we, again, we really appreciate you being here. I'm going to turn it over to you and let you close us out. Yep. Thank you, Peter. Um... Please let me know if you guys have questions. Uh, reach out to us. Um, I'll see y'all tomorrow on the underwriting call. Um, I know today was a little crazy. My computer decided to just to hate life um, in the beginning of the call, but uh, it's a Monday, so my computer thought it should it should act like it. Um, so apologize for that. But thank you guys for showing up anyway and staying on. You guys are awesome. Um, and reach out. My phone number is in my in the contact name. Um, I did put the script, the, the script in the chat. I Perfect. You guys should see it there. Um, if you guys got anything else, um, please let me know. If not, I will be signing off. Take care.